Hi, in this video we're going to be going over one of the questions from a practice test on the College Board. And this question has to do with quadratic functions and understanding both vertex form and standard form. All right, so here we have an equation um, that is super general in standard form, and we have a vertex. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this vertex and I'm going to put this in vertex form because I think that's going to be helpful. So vertex form of a quadratic equation is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, where the vertex is going to be h comma k. All right, so once you know that, we can start plugging in. So we don't know what a is, so I'm going to put a and then h minus, sorry, x minus 9 squared plus, or rather than plus, minus 14. All right, so that's in vertex form, but unfortunately, we do not know what A is. I think that's the goal of this question. If you can figure out what A is, I think B and C will come together. But let's go ahead and check that out and see. All right, so the first thing that we want to do here to simplify is expand or um, function right here, this part of the function. So I have y equals a, um, and that's really x minus 9 times x minus 9 minus 14. Now, if you've been practicing expanding things like this, you probably know that you did not have to do this step. You could have gone straight to the step of a times x squared minus 18x plus 81. And so I just foiled that skipped a couple things there hopefully I did not lose you in the process all right so now we can expand it we're going to just multiply everything by a and we get that y is equal to ax squared minus 18 ax plus 81 a minus 14 and now we can examine what exactly is our a or b and or c so Anything that is a coefficient of x squared is our a. So I'm going to switch colors here for emphasis. a is just actually just a. That's the only thing that is in front of x squared. But our b is a little bit more than just that. Or b is everything in, everything in front of x. Get a highlighter here. So we have that and we have, actually that's just, that's it. So or b, everything in front of x is going to be negative 18a and or c everything that does not have an x at all is over here highlighted in gray so or c is 81a minus 14. all right so going back to the very original question it said to us um, that they want what well, something that could be the value of a plus b plus c so that's the original question. So in my perfect world, my perfect world, I would just add a plus b plus c. So that's this plus this plus this. And I would get one of these numbers. Now, this is not my perfect world question, but that's OK. We're going to still keep plugging through. So a plus b plus c is going to be a plus, and there we have this, minus 18 or negative 18a. And now we have this plus 81a minus 14. All right, so now we have a bunch of a's, which is good. That is just one variable rather than the three we had before. So joining these variables, joining our like terms here, we have 64a minus 14. All right. So that is our expression here that we have for a plus b plus c. So now it's saying which of these things could be equivalent to that expression that we just came up with. And that seems like shooting in the dark. So at this point, I went back to the question looking for something unique for this function. So for example, did they give us any constraint? Did they say that um, anything had to be an integer, they did not. But what they did say that is worth noting that we haven't used so far 
is that um, this function intersects the x-axis at two points. And I think that's pretty important. So there's two solutions here. It intersects at two points. So at this point, I decided, you know what? We do have values for a plus b plus c. It's going to be one of these. It's either going to be a, b, or c. So I decided I'm going to just plug in and see what happens. So what happens, and I'm going to start from one of these middle terms here. So I'm going to start from c and see what happens. What happens if we plug in c? If we plug in c, then a plus b plus c will be negative 14. And if we try to solve that by adding 14 to each side, we get that 64a is equal to 0, which puts a at 0, which is a problem. Because if a is 0, this is not going to even be a quadratic, because this term would absolutely just disappear. Hopefully, you're following what I'm saying at this point. This is one of those, you're aiming for an 800 score in math questions, and so hopefully you understand the math pieces that are coming into this conversation. So this is a no-no. We definitely know this is not the answer. So let's try if we plug in D, um, which is negative 12. So I'm just going to erase this piece here that I just put down and replace that. Oops, I went too far, but here we go. All right, it was 64 minus 14. And then I'm going to replace that piece with negative 12. So in other words, I'm saying what happens if A plus B plus C is negative 12? And so we end up getting 64A is equal to, when you add 14 to both sides, you get positive 2. All right, so now that put, could potentially be possible. That would make A equal to 2 over 64, which is a super random number. But we do have decimals, and we can now see if we plug this into decimals as our a value, so into this very original function here, if we plug our a value as 2 over 64, does the function in fact have two solutions? So I'm going to try that out and see what happens. So let's delete that from our last thing. And we get, let's see here, so I'm plugging this thing in here, right there. All right, so we have y equals 2 over 64. And then we can plug in everything else. So that is x minus 9 squared. minus 14. And lo and behold, this function does in fact have two solutions, one over here, one over here. All right, so that is a possible value. Once you've found one possible value that works, the good news is you don't have to keep checking all of them. Uh, D is in fact our answer, and we're good to go.